Hello, guys. Yeah. In an article entitled Arone, Luciano Guerrero emphasizes a statement by Roman Jacobson according to which the entire linguistic apparatus, namely the phonetic, phonological, syntactic, and rhetoric dimension, has a significant influence on the poetic process. In this regard, according to Deleuze and Guattari, it is impossible to consider separation between linguistic and stylistics because, as stated by them, quote, a style is not an individual psychological creation, but an assemblage of enunciation. A writer can be therefore characterized, the style of the writer can be therefore characterized by the attempt to expand the limits of the standard language by making the standard language summer, tremble, cry, or even sing. Making language itself summer, quote, involves place, placing all linguistic and even non-linguistic elements in variation. Therefore, all the phonological, syntactic, semantic components can be affected by a process of continuous variation, leading to the creation of what the French philosopher called a language within a language. If every linguistic element contributes to the development of a literary style, vocal music in turn will be stylistically determined by the possibility of interacting with all the linguistic dimensions. In this perspective, the dissemination of new linguistic theories, the improvement of vocal and instrumental techniques, the development of new technologies enable a composer such as Reginald to establish in his composition an interaction with all the linguistic elements, especially focusing on the phonetic features of the text, thus emphasizing the timbral dimension of language. As stated by Deleuze and Guattari, quote, only when the voice is tied to timbre does it reveal a tessitura that renders it heterogeneous to itself and gives the power of continuous variation. It is no longer a campaign, but truly machine. It belongs to a musical machine which prolongs or superpose on a single plan parts which are spoken, sung, achieved by special effects, instrumental or perhaps electronic, electronically generated. Omaggio Giorgi Kutta by Luigi Nono can be considered an, as a paradigmatical example of such a musical machine. The text of this composition, conceived by Nono as a purely acoustic material, is entirely based on the phonemes which constitute the forename and surname of the Hungarian composer Giorgi Kutta. While cutting the ties with the poetic text, this composition implies a sound semantics whose roots can be traced in the intense relationships between the two composers. Quote, there are composers, is among them, among whom you can notice a way of inventing, a way of finding the unknown. And it is precisely what Nono called the anxiety for the unknown which prompted him to create homage to George Gurtag, the idea of exploring a limit, or, in the words of Deleuze, a zone of indetermination within which something or someone is seriously becoming other while continuing to be what they are, giving rise to that seeker near to the language without constants where a voice never ceases to become an instrument and an instrument to become a voice. The phonemes which constitute the name of George Kurtak are sung by the alto with a variety of vocal techniques ranging from whispering to sounds of fixed pitch. The use of a specific vocal or syllable during the vocal emission is strictly connected to the necessity of determining the shape of the phonatory apparatus in order to obtain subtle timbral variation. The woodwind players, in turn, produce sounds whose acoustic features evoke, reflect, and expand the acoustic future of the phonemes. The following table presents a phonetic transcription of the text uh, used by Nono that I realized. The color yellow has been used to mark the appearance of the entire surname of the Hungarian composer. Um, the IPA phonetic transcription is shown in the lower row. The phoneme of the uh, the surname of the Hungarian composer used five consonants whose future are summarized by the following table. Concerning the manner of articulation of the four consonants, they are uh, plosives. A plosive consonant is produced by a temporary and complete occlusion of the vocal tract, thus preventing a passage of the eye flow. The occlusion is immediately followed by an abrupt opening of the oral cavity, enabling uh, the release of the air. 
No, no, a book that emphasizes the sonic characteristic of plosive consonants through the use of loud sound impulses emitted by a wind instrument. Furthermore, both the forename and the surname of Bulgarian composer are characterized by the presence of the trill, uh, whose sounds produced by a vibration of an articulator within the oral cavity is evoked by the flute and the clarinet through the use of flatter tone and trills. As regards the articulation of the aforementioned consonants, an important remark should be made. The use of two different consonants, implying a different degree of structure of the oral uh, of the vocal tract and or a different place of articulation in order to alter the sound of the voice and thus obtaining a, a subtle timbral variation, is evidenced by the intonation of certain phonemes on the same pitch. Uh, the following scheme uh, exemplifies by way of different colors, the intonation of a certain couple of phonemes on the same pitch through the entire piece. As regards the vowels, the forename and the surname of the Hungarian composer used three vowels, namely E, U, and A. However, none of added to the previous phonemes uh, another vowel, E, taking advantage on the main base of phonation within the oral cavity. The simultaneous use of specific registers through which the instrument can produce sounds very similar to sine waves and specific vowels altering the sound of the voice is rise to an area of timbral indeterminacy within which the identity of voices and instruments seems to be dissolved. In bars 3 and 4, for example, the contralto sings the phoneme E and U on the same pitch. The voice of the singer intoning this phonet is perfectly blended with the sound of the clarinet and also uh, with the sound of the uh, tuba following the O. Proceeding now from the results of my previous research and compositional activities, I aim to further investigate the interaction between the phonetic characteristic of a test and the timbral and formal future of a composition, including voice, instruments and electronics, and also to explore the subtle transformation between sound and sense. A substantial part of my research is based on the use of music itself as a tool for text analysis through the reworking of a piece composed in 2013, which is called Il Mare Come Materiale, the seed as material for soprano and ensemble. The original piece that I, that, that I composed is based on the first line of a poem written by the Italian poet Giorgio Caproni, uh, Scolpire il mare, sculpting the sea. The first line of the poem has been decomposed into phonemes and then subsequently uh, reassembled through the following phonetic criteria. The degree of structure of the oral cavity, the distinction between consonants and vowels, the place where the phonation of the phonemes occurs, and the distinction between unvoiced consonants and uh, voice consonants. As an example of the, this process, uh, I'm going to play you the first two sections of the piece. further developed by using the full poem by Caproni and also adding live electronics. And being my composition still a work in progress, my presentation will now highlight the early stage of my creative process, 
such as the phonemic transcription of the poem, the phonemic analysis of the text, and the adoption of heterogeneous, heterogeneous techniques of text fragmentation. The creation of a musical machine is mainly based on the application of the continuous variation to the invariance of language, such as the phoneme distinctive features. The distinctive features theory was formulated for the first time by Roman Jacobson, Gunnar Fant, and Morris Haller in 19, 1952. Uh, through the research of the aforementioned linguist, uh, linguistic, has, uh, linguistic analysis has reached the objective of decomposing the phonetic units into bundles of distinctive features. Being the ultimate components of language and having no meaning of their own, the distinctive features uh, exhibit an important discriminatory function by differentiating the morphemes from uh, each other. Such a dis discrimi discriminatory function involves the use of a set of binary selection, for example, uh, uh, vocalic, non vocalic, uh, consonantal, non consonantal. Since the distinctive features are classified according to a binary position, and since each pair of features implies the presence of a specific acoustic characteristic, I aim to explore the continuum between opposite terms forming a series of distinctive features. In this regard, the quote, continuum of various intensities was identified by Deleuze as one of the key factors characterizing Carmelo Bene's theatrical practice when writing about Manfred for speakers, singers, orchestra, on text by Byron and music by Schumann. He highlighted Bene's abilities quote, to fix, create, or change the basic color of the sound. The ability, his ability allowed Carmelo Bene to blend his voice with the sound of, of the orchestra, thus creating what uh, Deleuze called the single sound plateau. In order to study the acoustic characteristic of the poem, I have carried out a phonemic transcription uh, by using the symbols of the International Phonetic Alphabet and by applying the rules uh, related to the Italian phonological system. Furthermore, I have then carried out an analytic transcription by decomposing the phonemes of the whole poem by Caproni. Uh, into bundles of distinctive features according to the criteria of the distinctive feature theory and the Italian phonemic uh, uh, pattern. Once determined uh, the distinctive features and once carried out the transcription, the following slide show uh, just the first uh, line of the poem with the analytical transcription. Uh, one of the most important acoustic features that I derive from the study of this material is the extensive use of vocalic alliteration, which enhances the phonetic relation between words. This slide here illustrates the, this characteristic. The color has been used to highlight the repetition of vocalic patterns. Once determined the vocalic patterns, I have examined the characteristic according to the criteria of the International Phonetic Alphabet and then the Distinctive Features Theory. Finally, by adopting techniques such as text fragmentation uh, and by using the Distinctive Feature Theory as a criteria for organizing the phonetic material, text of the poem, which is related just to the first section of the piece, has been processed as follows. The vocalic patterns can be arranged so as to create an alternation between areas characterized by the presence of closed, close mid vowels, open mid vowels, and open vowels. The first subsection, which is based on the superposition of two voices, is determined by the gradual introduction of the liquid L and R and the fricative S and Z, which leads to the creation of a new language unity, namely the syllable. From the acoustical point of view, the continuum L sound possessing a smooth onset is opposed to the interrupted L sound. Furthermore, uh, the fricative continuums S and Z are marked by a stridency feature, which implies the presence of irregular waveforms. Finally, the opposition between the unvoiced S and the voiced Z manifests itself through the absence uh, that is present of a supplementary harmonic sound source upon the primary noise source. The second subsection involves the reconstruction 
of the first words fragment to the addition of the plosive voiceless T and the plosive voice T, uh, which possess an abrupt onset. Furthermore, the position between liquids L and L and between the fricative phonemes, which had a purely acoustic value in the first section, becomes now a necessary factor in order to distinguish the first syllable of the word volto from the previous syllable son and form. The third subsection is based on the superposition of six voices and the use of text fragments which have been filtered, so as to create a degree of text fragmentation ranging from pure phonetic material to whole words. The superimposition and the filtering of the text has given rise to the following new texts. Dire le, dire le, dire le, il volto del dire. Send, 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 the face of speaking. Besides being a constant acoustic characteristic, the alliteration of the liquid phonemes determines the recreation of an area of semantic ambiguity due to the appearance of words such as dire, say, and dile, guante, uh, vanishing. Furthermore, the above mentioned class of phonemes is involved in the differentiation of syllables such as uh, uh, col, cor, col, belonging to the words uh, scogliere, cordigliere, scolpire. Finally, a new class of phonemes has been introduced, namely the nasal consonants. The opposition of distinct features related to the phonemes N and N exhibits a discriminatory function by differentiating the syllable lin and lin, belonging to the words lindicibile, the unspeakable, and lignificare, lignifying. In the following section, based on the superposition of six voices, the discriminatory, discriminatory function has the main aim of distinguishing the words uh, filare, il mare, lignificare, fissare, fino a fare. The second part and the last part uh, of, the, of this section are characterized by the presence of the following lines. Le sue musi, dire l'indicibile usando il mare fino a farne il volto del dileguante. Its musics. Uh, speak the unspeakable using the sea, so has to make uh, the face of the vanishing. Once completed the processing of the text, this polyphonic structure has been reduced to a monodic line, whose polyphonic futures will be then emphasized uh, via the exploration of the manifold gradation of the uh, speech music spectrum, such as speaking and whispering, speech gesang, syllabic and melismatic singing. In such a way, uh, the initial use of the phonetic criteria as a tool for decomposing and recomposing a, a text and as a catalyst of acoustic function uh, can lead to a creation of a sound assemblage characterized by the presence of manifold voices within a single voice, a sort of creative summary which, as pointed out by Deleuze, can be observed or obeyed with different procedures of variation in a Carmelo Benes theater or in Hieratzim Luca poetry. As regards the relationship between voice and instruments, an important premise has to be mentioned. Considering the production of phonemes from the point of view of both acoustic and motor phonetics, it is possible to compare the vocal apparatus to a system of filters. Filters are used in electronic music to alter the content of the signal. As the sound passes through a filter, it allows some frequencies to pass and it cuts off others. By modifying the size and shape of the resonant cavity of the mouth, a vocal sound is then filtered. As implied in the IPA and in the distinct features theory, the use of vowels plays a primary role in defining the shape of the oral cavity in order to obtain uh, timbre, specific timbral qualities, and the electronic tools in turn can enhance the sonic characteristic of a text. In the light of this fact, in order to apply the process of continuous variation to the musical instruments, thus creating a timbral relation between vocal and instrumental sounds, I aim then to filter the sound of uh, uh, musical instruments according to the spectral content of a specific uh, uh, vowel extracted from the poem. In addition, using the aforementioned vocalic patterns and following uh, the model of the hyper vocal matrix, it is possible to compose a continuum of instrumental sounds which have specific vocalic qualities, for example, going from a sound comparable to an open vowel to a sound comparable to a closed mid vowel, A, E. 
The application of the process of continuous variation to the instrumental parts through the exploration of the continuum between opposite terms forming a series of distinct futures leads then the linguistic and sound components of the composition on a single plan. In the words of Thomas Mann, quoted by Deleuze and Guattari, a simple screen suffusing all degrees. Thank you for your attention. Exactly how he worked, but they know what he did 
if you, uh, uh, my question is that, if you uh, use what the Deleuze uh, tells about Benny as a theory, or if Benny himself, his uh, works uh, are uh, contaminated, mm. yeah. if you are open mm. no, 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 I'm not, I'm not using what the is saying to, uh, to, uh, about Bene, but um, just, it's just a simple artistic contamination. I mean, I, I admire the works of Bene and I could see uh, the video recording of his, uh, uh, basically, almost his works. Uh, so it's just a contamination, uh, artistic contamination. So I like the use of the voice. Uh, and what do you think about this, of the virtuality of the text or of you know, something that is in, uh, of the forces, not mm -hmm. just the forms. Yes. And uh, how does it, uh, is, it appears when you are composing, for example? Mm. Uh, basically, when I uh, work on a text and I decide which part of the text has to appear or which part has to disappear, most of the time it's just related to to sound, to sound matter. So I'm not looking for the meaning itself on, on the text. I'm not, I'm not interested in that. Uh, yeah. So it's just a question of perception of sounds. Can you yeah. Yeah. Consider the singer to be, in effect, an instrument of uh, Yes, because uh, I can say about the setup of the piece that you have heard, uh, there was a kind of circle, <coughs> and the singer was uh, in the middle of the circle. So, so they don't as a carry kind of, the poem to, no, no. As, a, as a presence. Right. Thank you, Paolo. Thank, Thank you. you.